and if, I'm, if I could please welcome back to the stage our guest speaker, David Cameron, who is the consultant and former director of the Children's Services and Stirling Council. And I so get this all the time with this David Cameron thing. You know, paparazzi, I had a really terrible experience a while back. I was checking into the Radisson Hotel in Glasgow. I was doing a parents conference on the Saturday. I'd been booked in on the Friday night. When I was checking in, it was a lovely young Eastern European woman on the reception desk. And she kept looking at me, and she kept looking at my name, and then she'd look at me, and then she'd look at my name, and then she looked at me again. I thought it was my lucky night for a while. But anyway, never I, um, I then appreciated that she'd gone through the back and said to the manager, there's a man has just checked in. His name is very familiar to me. I don't know why. And the manager said, what is his name? And she said, David Cameron. And I went, David Cameron? Who booked him in? So she checked and she said, Scottish government. And he immediately put two and two together and got about 65 and a half. And he phoned Scottish Government and he was completely outraged by this time. And he said to the civil servant, What on earth is going on here? We've got David Cameron staying here and we know nothing about security. And the woman in the other end said, oh, If you just watch the towels and the cutlery, they'll be fine. <laughs> which I don't think was quite what they expected. I also want just to pick up on something that's not been done tonight because lots of people have been mentioned and lots of people have been welcomed, but for some reason these people have been missed out. Can I please ask you to put your hands together for Simon Cowling, the X Factor judges? <laughs> The, the good news for you is that, like many a young man from the west of Scotland, my mother gave me some advice and um, I was driving up to a prize giving in uh, Calendar in Stirling and I was on the phone to her, I was hands free, it was completely legal. And she said to me, she said, what are you doing the night, son? She's a working class woman herself. She said, what are you doing the night, son? I said, I'm away to a prize giving, mum, I'm, I'm the guest speaker. She said, well, just remember this, David. They're all there to see their parents get prizes. Nobody's there to listen to you. So just keep it short. <laughs> so that's the good news. I will keep it short. I will, of course, stretch out, though, because this is the only way I have ever been able to get onto a platform at a prize game. I never, ever won a prize when I was at school. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And if there's any spare Oscars left over afterwards, I wouldn't mind taking one home with me. But um, I, I did this, I was at a prize giving when I worked in East Lothian, I was at a prize giving in one of the schools, and the head teacher in her address, she wasn't like the lawyer for the defence, as in the case of Mr. White tonight, but she was talking about how something like 60% of the young people in the school had had better higher results than she'd had. And she just hoped that they would do as much with their lives as she'd been able to do with hers. And then I got up and told them that I'd never won a prize. And I thought this was all very motivational till we were walking out the hall and there's a couple walking out in front of us, an older guy and his wife. And the guy turns to his wife and says, I'm a bit worried about that heat teacher. And his wife says, I know she doesn't seem very bright at all. Apparently her hires are very poor indeed. And he goes, I in that head of education, he seems a right clot. He's never won a prize in his life. <laughs> So anyway, like it or not, you've got me. The other thing I didn't worry about was I'm a bit of a jinx at prize givings. Um, the first prize giving I attended as a teacher, they insisted that all the staff sat on the platform during the prize giving. And the head teacher, again, wasn't at all like Mr. White. He spoke for a very long time and he was a bit dull. <laughs> I said he wasn't like Mr. White. Let's get clear about that. So much so that one of the assistant heads who was sitting right at the front of the stage actually fell asleep and toppled from the stage into the audience. It was my very first prize given. I thought somebody had committed suicide. But he'd fallen asleep. 
And I was again, I was telling this story, another prize given, I was at Preston Pan's secondary school in East Lothian. And a woman came up to me and said, I was at that prize given, I'll never forget it. What was his name again? And it was Dave Downey. If Dave Downey's got any relatives here tonight, I'd like to publicly apologise to them. But again, you know, that whole thing about people falling asleep in long speeches, there are all sorts of different prize givings. I think this is a brilliant one. I think it's a great format. And I'd like to join you, Bailey, in congratulating Bobby Coates for coming up with the idea. When I went to... Uh, when I went to one of the schools that, that I, I worked in, I've worked in quite a number of schools, when I, when I went to one of the schools, the head teacher was a, a really interesting character, a huge guy, and he had great big hands and fingers like bananas, and he was a bit you know, of a brute really, I suppose that's the technical expression you might use to describe him. Excuse me while well, I check my notes on my iPad, they are extensive and I don't want to get it wrong. I'd been in the school for about a month and he'd never spoken to me. And after this month I was walking past his office one day and he came out and he put the big banana hand on my shoulder and he said, you better come in here with me till we have a word. So he took me into his office and he said, I've got some advice for you. And I said, what's that? And he said, get yourself a gown. And I wasn't quite what I'd been expecting. He said, you'll need one for the prize giving. In the schools that matter, we still wear gowns at the prize giving. Get yourself one. You'll get them second hand, he said. You'll get them in some magazines. I was wondering what kind of magazines he was reading. But anyway, and he then said to me, he then said to me, and while you're at it, get yourself one of these. And he walked over to this big walk-in cupboard and he came out and he was holding my cardboard box with holes drilled in it and everything. And I was a bit anxious about it. And he opened it and all I could see was fur. <laughs> Now there are some schools you go to where if you want to get on you need to play golf. There are some schools you go to if you want to go on you need to play bridge. This was the first school I thought I'd finished up in where you needed to keep ferrets. But strangely enough it wasn't, it was his academic hood with a fur trim on it. And he said to me, get yourself one of these. It doesn't even need to be your own subject. So I went and got myself one. I got myself exactly the same as his. And he wouldn't let me go on the platform at prize giving. So really, up until now, I've not really had much luck with prize givings. So now's the time to worry. But this is a different night for me. Because like everyone else that's involved, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. I've been working off and on with this school now for close on two years, possibly a bit longer. I came here because Ian, Mr White as he's commonly known, but he was about to get a visit from the local authority. Um, they were coming in in full uniform um, with the armbands and everything to do a review in the school and he wanted somebody to come in and do a review before they got there. And he said to me, and I was really honoured that he said it, he said I wanted to be somebody that I trusted and somebody whose judgement I would respect. But I couldn't get anybody that fitted that bill, so I'm going to have you instead. So anyway, I came in and I spent a week in the school, I spent time in classes, I spent time talking to young people, I spent time talking to teachers, I spent time looking at some of the data, and I was blown away by it. I was hugely impressed by the school. And in fact, the school's given me two of my favourite quotes of all time. And the first one was, I had a meeting with a group of pupils while I was doing the review, I had an hour with them, and after 40 minutes, I'd had enough. Because all they were doing was telling me how wonderful the school was. And anything I asked them, they were telling me wonderful things about it. And I'd said to them at one point, I'd said, the lessons in the school are all a bit the same though, aren't they? You know, every lesson you have, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but every lesson that you have, pretty much, they start off telling you what you're going to learn, and then they teach you, and then they told you you've learned it. That's pretty much the format, am I right? Yeah, good, okay. And I said to them, do you not get a bit bored by that? And they all went, no, no, it's fine. It's good to know where you stand and blah, blah, blah. They went very positive. And one girl went, well, I'm a bit bored right now. So anyway, after 40 minutes, I said, you're all telling me the same thing, so I'm just going to let you go back to your class. But I'd quite like to have a word with you, said the girl. And I was chatting away to her, and she said, I can't, it's not that it's no good. It's just I've been here for five years. I get it now. I don't need to be told every time. 
And I went, that's really good. I said, tell me a wee bit about yourself. What are you going to do? And she said, I'm going to go to university. I'm going to be a PE teacher. And I said, that's great. I said, was that always your ambition? And she said to me, Mr. Cameron, when I was in second year, I didn't even know there was a university. And I said, what turned things around for you? And she said, my English teacher. And I said, how did she do that? She said, because every time I told her I couldn't do something, she told me I was wrong. And every time she told me I was wrong, she was right. Because I did it. And that seems to me, in lots of ways, to sum up an awful lot about what's really special about Govan High School. And my other favourite quote was from my very good friend and tonight's first award winner, Ross, and another few people who were in having a discussion about the graduate group. And they were telling me that they'd been to Cambridge. And I'd said to them, that's great, and they told me a bit about it. And I said to one of the girls in the group, I said, and what did you learn from that? And she said, I learned it was a place for people like me as well. And I just loved that. I just loved that whole thing about people being able to go from here to places that many of us would only dream about going to. To go to places which other people take huge and enormous pride in and to realise it's a place for folk like me as well. And to have that ambition and to have that aspiration that Ian spoke about earlier on in the evening. I brought a group of Dutch visitors here in September of last year. And we spent a whole day in the school. And like me in my first experience of the school, they were completely blown away by it. I had a message on Twitter this week from one of them. And they sent with it a picture. And here's one of them talking about their visit to Scotland. And they're standing in front of the ugliest, most frightening PowerPoint slide you will ever see in your life. It's got me on one side of it and Ian White on the other. Now how scary is that? It's like an audition for Cinderella and he and I are up for the ugly sisters. But there you are, a year on from their visit, they're still talking about what happened in Scotland and more importantly and consistently, they're still talking about Govan High School. And what's wonderful about the school, I think, is the consistency of vision that they have. And you can see that in the categories of awards that we've got tonight. It's not about academic achievement, it's about skills. Because that's what young people need for the future. Covenant High School is not preparing young people for a world that no longer exists. It's not trying to reinvent a better past for them. It's trying to work with them so that together they can ensure a better future. Not just for these young people and not just for this school, but for this community. Because this is a school that's always learning. This is a school that doesn't stop and say we're good enough now. This is a school that continually looks at what it's doing and how it's performing and finds ways to do it better. This is a school where staff believe in the vision of the school and young people in the school accept it. I constantly met young people here who've got a confidence that I never had when I was their age. An ability to speak I never had when I was their age and a generosity with their time that I certainly never had when I was their age. It's a school that's always learning, but as Ian said at the start of the night, the thing to be really proud of is, this is a school that is always delivering. Delivering better outcomes, delivering better futures. One of the things I'm fond of saying is that there are far too many people in our communities who don't have a future, they've got a destiny. You can predict where they're going to go on the basis of their background and the circumstances into which they're born. The job of an educator is not simply to add value to lives, it's to change destinies into futures. It's to take people and make sure that they don't achieve their potential. It's to take them and redefine their potential. It's to make them see much more clearly not only who they are, but who they might become. And under the care of Govan High School, an unparalleled number of young people are consistently doing that. It doesn't happen just because of the efforts of the staff. It happens because of the efforts of the community. And above all, it happens because of the efforts of the young people themselves. And the prize winners you're seeing on this stage this evening, as far as Govan High School are concerned, are only the tip of the iceberg. The folk down there that are hooping and hollering and celebrating and enjoying their success with them are a huge part of it. This is not a school that's about success for the few. This is a school that's about success for everyone, regardless of who you are, regardless of why you're here tonight. 
be proud of that. Thanks for the <laughs> Thank you very much.